The Story of Chopsticks by Ying Chang Compostine, illustrated by Yang Sheng Xian. Long ago, all Chinese people ate with their hands, including members of a family named Kang. The Kang family had three boys: Pan, Ting, and Kuai. All the boys loved to eat, especially the youngest, Kuai. Yet Kuai never seemed to get enough food; he was always hungry. One afternoon, Mama Kang called out, "It's time to get ready for dinner." Papa, cut the chicken. Pan, peel the sweet potatoes. Ting, start the fire, and Kuai. Get water from the well. Wonderful smells soon filled the house. Kwai's tummy rumbled. If only I could eat my food right away, he thought. But if I pick it up too soon, it burns my fingers. And if I wait too long, my brothers get most of it and leave me nothing. He thought and thought. Time for dinner. Everybody, wash your hands! Shouted Mama. They all ran to the well. Pan brought the bucket. Ting lowered it. Papa hauled it up. Kwai waited. "I'm going to be first," he said. "You don't have to rush," said Mama. "The food is still too hot to eat." Kwai said nothing, but his lips held a smile. As he washed, he splashed water all over. Kwai scolded Papa. "Look at the mess you made." The bucket is nearly empty. Ting, help me refill it. While they got more water, Kwai ran back to the house. Kwai plucked two long twigs from the kindling by the stove, and speared a chicken leg with one stick, and a big chunk of sweet potato with the other. Then he started to eat. The food was still hot, yet he didn't burn his fingers. Best of all. He didn't have to race his older brothers. For once, he was going to get enough to eat. When his family finally returned from the well, they were surprised. Ting understood immediately. He ran to the kindling and got himself two long twigs. Pan and Papa were right behind him. In a moment, they were climbing over each other, wrestling for twigs. Ay yo! They cried. Kwai never stopped eating. After a while, things settled down. Everyone had a pair of twigs, even Mama. We should give these sticks a name," suggested Pan. "Let's call them Kwai's, to honor Kwai, the quick one in our family," said Ting. Kwai smiled at his brother. This was the first time. That a family in China ate dinner with sticks instead of their hands. A few days later, Mama came home very excited. Mr. Wang is holding a wedding for his daughter. It will be a big banquet. Everyone is invited. On the day of the wedding, Papa carried a bundle of red silk, a symbol of celebration. Mama carried a basket of fruit and nuts. A symbol of their wish that the new couple would soon have many children. Unknown to anyone else, the boys brought something too. When they arrived, Kwai led his brothers to join the other children. Look at that food! I never saw a table as big as this one. Ting grinned. See the steam rising from that fish? It smells so good. It will be a long time before anyone can pick it up. Pan whispered to his brothers, "See those girls rolling up their sleeves? They don't want their clothes to get dirty." The children stared at the food like starved wolves. Servants carried out more meat and vegetable dishes. Dumplings, egg rolls, and rice cakes soon followed. All the children moved in closer, getting ready to strike. Kwai looked at his brothers. Let's go! The Kang boys whipped out their sticks and attacked the butterfly chicken, 
wealthy peony beef, steamed buns, rice cakes, and especially the sweet Eight Treasures rice pudding. The other children stared at them. Some tried to grab food for themselves. I yo, they yelled. It's too hot. The smart ones ran off to find their own sticks. Before long, all the children were searching for sticks. Some even climbed trees to break off the branches. What is all this noise? Asked Mr. Yang. Soon, all the grown-ups were gathered around the banquet table, even the bride and groom. Children held all kinds of sticks. A tall boy held two large branches. A toddler carried tiny twigs. Some children had their arms full. Papa opened his mouth to scold the boys. When he did, Kwai put a big piece of meat in his mouth. "Try the chicken!" he cried. Now Papa was too busy chewing to yell at them, but Mama wasn't too busy. Boys, she cried. Boys, Pan put a big piece of rice cake in her mouth. Now Mama couldn't scold either. Mr. Wang looked sternly at the running children. He glowered at Mama and Papa, who were chewing away. Ay yo! He cried. A hush fell over the crowd. Mr. Wang turned red. He began to shake. He was laughing. Everyone else started to laugh too. Mr. Li, the village wise man, stepped forward. He looked very serious. After he raised his hand for attention, the crowd fell silent. Mr. Li pointed at the children's sticks. Whose idea was this? He thundered. The Kang boys looked at one another. Pan stepped forward. It was my idea. Please don't blame my brother. Then Ting bowed carefully to Mr. Li. It was my idea. Please don't blame my brother. Papa walked over to Mr. Li. It is my fault, Mr. Li. We did not teach our children manners. Please, Mr. Li gestured for silence. I must meet with the village leaders tomorrow morning. Your whole family shall attend. Early the next morning, Mr. Li met with the scholar, the doctor, the matchmaker, and the Kang family. He looked at the Kang boys. Tell me who had the idea for the sticks. Kwai timidly raised his hand. How did you come up with this idea? I didn't want to wait for food to cool because I was always hungry, and I wanted to eat before my brothers because there was never enough food left for me. Mister Li frowned. Do these sticks have a name? We call them Kwai's quick ones," said Ting. Mister Li turned to the other elders. I would like your suggestions for the proper way to eat. The doctor said, "We should let our elders begin the meal. We should not stir food in serving bowls," said the matchmaker. "The food should be cut into small pieces so that it's easy to eat," said the scholar. Then he added, "What should we do about these quaisa?" Mister Lee smoothed his long white beard and took a sip of tea. None of these rules conflicts with using quaisa to eat. After much thought, I say that eating with quais is a good idea. I will write a report and send it to the emperor. The emperor also liked eating with quais. Before long, people were using them in every part of China. From there, quais spread to other countries, including America. There, they are called chopsticks, quick sticks. As for the Kang family. They opened the very first chopstick factory. Their chopsticks, beautifully decorated with dragons, phoenixes, flowers, and lucky letters, became famous. Kwai was the happiest boy in China. His food was never too cold, and he always got enough to eat.
sometimes even too much. Thanks for watching Storytime with Miss Rose. If you liked the video, make sure to subscribe and click the notification bell for more videos. If you enjoyed the book, there's a link to purchase in the description below. Thank you.